Say it should be a verbal description. You'll be writing things down, you'll, the, the worksheets facilitate putting this information down. Yeah, you can start looking at what you want your house to look like and so on and so forth, but essentially it'll be a verbal and partly visual exercise. You can then move on to expressing that information in terms of drawings and models. So this is important. The drawings and the models essentially are the language of architecture, particularly the drawing. So there's there's a simple method of drawing described in the in the in the handbook, and you can follow this. So you you'd be essentially translating your verbal description of what your house is going to be like into drawings, and you'll also be looking at how to make models because of course buildings are three dimensional and you can only show on paper two dimensions. So drawings are a little bit obscure in terms of looking at what buildings are actually like in reality. So you, you can make models, you can make three dimensional models, scale models to look at what the building might be like in, in reality and of course then you can modify that if you're not satisfied with it. You then look at the environmental aspects, setting your bottom line in terms of environment, what sort of inner environment do I want to create and of course there's a lot of emphasis on the course on, on the inside of the building because of course this is where you live even though generally speaking architecture is thought of as something you look at from the outside and yet that's important same as it's important in people people have a particular dress code or dress sense or they, they pay particular sort of attention to their appearance that's significant too in terms of building but really in terms of people it's what they're like inside that's so important and this of course is true of buildings too the inside of the building so setting your environmental preferences is very important essentially you want to make a healthy internal environment so it's not threatening your your physical well-being your your home and the inside of it is one part of the world that you can actually control so it's very very important that your your physical well-being is not threatened and that in turn you are not putting pollutants out there into the immediate environment of your you know your your land your garden and so on and you, and you're not putting pollution further out into the environment and of course that you're not bringing pollutants into the house be very critical that then directly leads on to looking at how the building would be heated now this is very very important Part of it is probably the key element of it, or if you're in a hot climate, looking at how the building will be cooled, though perhaps in those climates, you know, it gets very cold in the winter, so heating will always be significant. And the, the general trend is towards what's called zero heating demand, in other words, that you're not having to use oil to heat the building, or you're not having to use electricity, or, you know, you're, you're utilizing perhaps the heat in wood to heat the house that you're you know you're, you're you're not going to be reliant in other words on you know a truck coming down the road and filling an oil tank it's just not sustainable it's not really practical um, so you're looking at capturing solar energy you're looking at high levels of insulation and you're looking at what's called heat storage capacity in other words the heat of the sun that you're picking up during the day that you can keep it in the house so again you make decisions in terms of, of, of you know, your preferences in terms of heating and this informs the design process. So as you can see everything remains separate as in terms of a topic but you put the plan of the building together towards the end. This is in contrast to normal design methodology where you get a plan together as quick as you can and anybody who's embarked on that particular way of design knows how difficult it is to introduce modifications so the design process keeps everything separate acknowledges the linkages between things and it's only when you've looked at everything in detail that you assemble all the information together um, that'll that